What's up guys, LQ here with the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me here at my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, and TV shows. And right now we're going to do part two of my October series where I am reviewing the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I've already reviewed the first Nightmare on Elm Street. It's up on my channel. Now let's talk about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. This one is is weird. <laughs> in some ways, I think it might be the black sheep of the Nightmare series. In ways that, you know, you look at, when you think of the black sheep of the Nightmare series, you might think Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Maybe you think Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Um, but the thing is that F Nightmares 5 and 6, they stuck with the rules. I can't say Freddy's Dead is a good movie, because it's not can't say Nightmare 5, The Dream Child, is a good movie. I tend to defend it for its dark tone and its um, it's, it's kind of interesting late 80s, early 90s MTV vibe that it has going. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so Freddy's uh, Nightmare 2, Freddy's Dead, is a better movie than 5 and 6. Absolutely. But in some ways, Nightmare 2 is kind of the black sheet because it is the one that kind of stands out as being very different from the others. Where 5 and 6 stuck with the rules, Nightmare 2 doesn't really stick with the rules of the franchise. Nightmare 2 has Freddy trying to possess a body so he can get into the real world. And that body is the body of Jess, played by Mark Patton where Freddy, is, so Jess moves into um, the Thompson house on Elm Street, and Freddy sees the opportunity to possess him so he can get out into the real world. And, you know, I just did a rewatch of this of this whole series, but specifically I just did a rewatch of, of Freddy's Revenge, and I don't think there was one kill in this movie that took place in the dream world. I believe they were all in the real world. But that being said, you know, while in some ways this is the black sheep, in some ways this breaks a lot of the rules of the lore, I also feel like this movie gets more hate than it deserves. I feel like this was still Freddy scary. You know, he hadn't made the jump to um, to pop icon yet. He hadn't made the jump to weird, quipster, witty, making jokes why he kills. He hadn't gone there yet. So this was still him scary. It was absolutely breaking the rules of the franchise. And I think that's why this one is kind of ignored in canon. But there's still some good stuff here. Absolutely. Um, the way that he kind of torments Jesse um, when Jesse first goes downstairs if in his dream, finds the boiler room, and Freddy comes out and talks to him. That's kind of a scary scene. A lot of people give the pool party at the end. They give that a lot of crap. I think that was iconic. <laughs> you are all my children now. That's a cl iconic classic line in Freddy lore. And for some reason, people don't seem to like the scene that that takes place in. Um, for me, I just, I just found Freddy to be at his classic scary self when he was at this pool party. There was a, a scene in the pool party where a, a, a kid tried to stop Freddy. He was no, 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 no. And Freddy just kind of hovers over him before taking him out. Um, the rules might be a little um, fly by the seat of your pants. You know, that there were there were things that happened in the real world at the pool party that, uh, that you know, defy what can happen in reality. So it seemed like there was some merging between the dream world and the real world. And again, they never really do a good job of explaining that. They never really do a good job of explaining, did Jesse kill the coach and Freddy used him to do it? You know, did it... they never really do a good job of explaining the mechanics of what was happening, especially in the scene where Freddy just pops out of Jesse's body. What was happening there? 
it looked like Jesse died, but then he was alive. So, so is that what happened before Freddie killed the coach and we, it just didn't happen on screen. There's a lot of things that happen in this that they didn't do a good enough job of explaining. They just kind of sat on the fact that, Hey, this is a horror movie. Let's just, let's just have some fun with it. <laughs> um, but overall, I do feel like there is good stuff in this. It's one of the weaker nightmare movies, but there is more good stuff in this than there is in five and six. And I will defend it as being better than those two movies. Um, not because it sticks with the lore and sticks with the canon, but because there's good, scary stuff in here. Um, now, you know, I've, I've seen Scream Queen. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've read some of the stories about how this is considered to be like the, the gay nightmare on Elm Street. I was oblivious to that as a kid watching. Uh, that was something that never crossed my mind in any way whatsoever. So as I watch it now, um, it's not something that I'm, I'm looking for. It's not something that I'm paying much attention to. Um, having seen the documentaries, having read the stories, if I'm looking for it, clearly I see it. And, and I've watched it in that context once before. Um, but while that might be true, and there might have been something that the director was doing here, um, it, it's not something that is particularly impactful for me. So, you know, I've, I've read stories that the director was trying to do something positive here. I've also read stories that the director was trying to do something negative here. That... Um, um, you know, like uh, gay conversion therapy or something like that. Um, I, 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 I don't know, and I don't really care all that much. What I care about cares about the narrative and the uh, uh, the story being told and the way that the story is being told and is Freddy scary and are the kills good and things like that. And for the most part, I think all that is positive in this. So, gay context aside. You know, it's 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 not something that is impacting whether I like the movie or don't like the movie, because m most of my viewing history watching this movie as a kid, it was something I just went right over my head. And probably because of that, it's able to go over my head now. I just don't really pay much attention to it. So I like this movie and I think that this movie um, gets a little more hate than it deserves. I think it's it's definitely far from being the weakest of the nightmare films. And by the way, it has the greatest opening sequence in any nightmare movie ever. The bus scene was scary. <laughs> I remember the bus scene when I was a kid, the bus scene terrified me. Um, and, and even today watching it, it's, it's a cool, it's a very, it's a very, um, intense and very, um, awesome visual scene where where you can feel the the terror that these kids have on that bus so nightmare on Elm Street 2 freddy's revenge it's nowhere near the best of the nightmare films but it's also nowhere near the worst it's kind of a good solid nightmare movie not one that i go back to all the time but it is one that i revisit from time to time so that's my take on Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there commenting, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.